Lift your voice and bless him. Lift your voice. Give you all the praise. Adore his name. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Bless his holy name. Adore him. We lift up our voice, Lord. And we say you are worthy. You are our provider. You are our keeper. You are the one that sustains us in all. We thank you for the assurance given to us. We thank you that we have our eternal life is obtained through our Lord Jesus Christ. We bless you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. God. In the name of Jesus, the Lord, we know when we pray, you answer. We thank you, Lord. Wherever you find yourself, open your mouth and bless his holy name. Give you all the praise. Oh, we reverence you, Lord. We give you all the honor. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you for the assurance in you, Lord. We thank you for the protection. We thank you for the provision. In the name of Jesus, all in all, you have been good. You have been faithful. We are once not faithful, but Lord, you have remained faithful. Lift your voice and bless it wherever you are. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Lift your voice. Give you all the honor. Give you all the praise. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Allah Baba Bali under the Bosha. He's on Pekapalia. He low rebels keep on the Naha. He Lebran de de Kapa. Allah Baba Lios Kapali and the Lebosha. He Roma se Kapali and the Lebro Livra. He in the Lebalua Kapali and Dosa. He take up Palabanaba. Lift your voice and pray in the language of the Spirit. Open your mouth and speak in the language. You are charging your spirit, man. He let go Pandeleba. Allah Balua Kapali and Deleba, he look up at the Balua Teleba, in the Nebos, Kipala Braha, Allah Palian Dolos Kepali and Deleha, he Romas Kepali and Deloa Telaba, Alian Dos Kipan de Lebosa, Alian Dabala Balaba, Alian Dos Kapali and Deleboha, he rose Sete Kapali and Dana, Liangu was Sedea, Allah Pada Banaba, Ariamos Salibanabosa, Aramas Sekapalaba, he lobos Salabariana, Aramas Seke. Let your voice, let your voice. Hallelujah, like Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Charge yourself, edify yourself in the spirit. Ilong baliwapa, alindo le balaba. Ilo kosha de baliyata, alim baliwala baliyala. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Ilo masheke, ilong baliyatusha. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Ilong baliyapa, alindos sekapa, alibranda la balaba, alindos kapa, alindoliapa la ba. Lift your voice and pray. Let your spirit pray. Oh, we remember. 
bless you, Lord. And for we are sent with the angels. And we speak of the language. We speak in tongues. Wherever you find yourself, pray, 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 pray. Wherever you are, pray, pray, pray. Speak in the language. Edify yourself. Charge your spirit, man. For the Lord is good. For the Lord is good. Lift it, lift it, lift it, lift it. Charge the atmosphere. Subdue kingdoms. By the 
pray in tongues. say we speak mysteries in lumped water. It is the way of the city. Pray in tongues. Bible say when the city came upon them, they spoke in different languages. They spoke in different tongues. Pray in that language. And if I yourself charge your spirit, Unravel the mysteries, unravel the mysteries, unravel them. And the panda, the panda, a ramosa, a pampa, a papa, a rama papa, a papa, a rama papa, a little tenet, a loma dua to the upper, a loma dua, a little papa, a yada da ba da ba, a yama da ba da ba, a yando da da da, a lia pa lia kapa, oh zene ma kapa, hey yeah, a yada da ba da ba da ba, a lenda da ba, a ramosa, a panda da ba, a rama kapa lia da da, a little da da ba luwa. Osa, ilomba diwasa, ikondo diapa, ilonda diapa, ilonda diapa. Hey, the power is here. Charge yourself wherever you are. Ilomba nomba nebe, ali kapadi atosa, ilondo de padua kapa, ibanda kapa, eloko padi kidu basa, ikombe diapa, ikopale badu basa, ali kapadi abada ba. Oh, let us spirit pray. Let your spirit pray. Ali padu bata kapa, ikombe do padu basa, ali kapa. In your homes, subdue that power. In your house, subdue that power. And lick up all the evil one by praying in tongues. In Toke Padiata, in Lombaduata, make your spirit active. Make it sharper to hear the word of God. And lick Randadaba, let the signal be active. Let your channel be active. Let the frequency flow. And Lum Padubadaba, and lick Randadaba. We tune to the spirit realm. And lick Randadaba. And I say from the wisdom of God, we assess, we tune our spirit man, we enter, we enter, we enter, we enter. God say, I call to party, I call the party, I ban do party, I look up and do it, I never come up, I don't belong to the water, I can't be the water, I lend the devil the water, I never ban the devil the water. Hey, yo, so lumbo do, lumbo do. Oh, we are not settling. Don't settle now. Don't settle now. Keep on ascending. Ali katala laba. Hey, yeah, yeah. Oh, la ba da ba da ba. We enter. We enter. We enter. Enter the realms with your language. We do kapa. Elong bado pulwa. Ali kapali adara. Father, we enter. We call Abraham. Tonight we go. We want mysteries to be unraveled. Unravel the mysteries of God. Wisdom must be manifest. Knowledge must be manifest. We call upon the Lord and we are praying in the language of the Spirit. We know the Lord that we serve. He is God of all. Therefore, I stand in that language. Bible says, Who know the mind of God? And we have the mind of Christ. The mind of Christ. The Spirit in us. Intercede for us. In growing, in words, and lip on the bar, in spiritual language, the words cannot utter. The words that we speak, the mind cannot fathom. In the front of the heart, the language that we speak, this mind cannot comprehend. So speak the language. Alone, Toliata, Panda the Papa, Alobadi Atusa, Alla Panda the Papa. Wherever you are, pray. Aya la 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 la. Oh, Toliata, pray the language. Speak in tongues. Freaking tongues! It all a bolo boha, a lendo do 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 boha. If you cannot pray in tongues, worship the Lord in your homes, in your cars, wherever you are, wherever you are. Hey, yeah, Tony, the presence of God is on this line. Pray. He's there with you. Lift your voice and pray in tongues. God say, "Ikete kete kete, ayakata da 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 da, makoto la balia." I get the kodumata, lumpe the pe, the domba, the kombe de, the lope tuketa, the lapa de 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 de, the lubondo lobo lo 
Jesus, we honor you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, King of Kings. Thank you, Lord of Lords. Father, we bless you tonight. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. We give you the, all the adoration. For you deserve it, and we bring it unto you tonight in Jesus' name. We thank you that, Lord, you have watched over us, kept us safe, and brought us here tonight. In the name of Jesus, I thank you for everyone that has connected to the broadcast and even those who will connect later. I pray in the name of Jesus that you will be our teacher tonight and you will teach us. May you bring us revelation and may you cause our hearts to be uh, able to accept your word. And to begin to live in obedience to your word. I pray, Holy Spirit, have your way tonight. Have your way tonight. And lead us in the name of Jesus. We honor you and glorify you for your presence in this place. Even on this broadcast this evening. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, it's, uh, I just want to welcome everyone, wherever uh, you are watching from, we want to welcome you tonight, and um, I just want to tell you that I believe God is going to speak to you tonight, God is going to really reveal something to you tonight that will bless you and that will cause you to be able to walk in the blessing and in the favor of God. Amen. So tonight, we're going to speak, this is House of Peace again. This is House of Peace. And um, we are here tonight because um, under normal circumstances, we'll be in uh, different places, different houses, really meeting together in smaller groups to share the word of God, but unfortunately, because of what we're going through, we always have to meet you here, and then uh, to you in your homes, and tonight is no different, we are here because God himself, the God that we serve himself has given us a beautiful day, beautiful weather today. Wherever you are, whether you are in the U.S., whether you are in the U.K., whether you are anywhere else where the time is different from our time here in Ghana, we are on the GMT, so it's um, um, 7.25 here in Accra, and we are reaching you from Accra, Ghana, so we just want you to Take your notebook, take your pencil or a pen, and let's go on this journey together. Amen. So, tonight, 
we're going to speak on how to walk in the blessing and favor of God. How to walk in the blessing and favor of God. The, the, the major objective for tonight is by the time we finish, we would have learned how to really activate the blessings of God. Because God really has a lot of blessings for us. And his desire is to bless us. But there is, there, I mean, the blessing is available, yet there are certain things that we do to activate the blessing. Hallelujah. And tonight, we will look at some of those things and try to really discuss them. What I want you to understand is that many times we have stuff that we can give to people, but most of the time, uh, people do stuff for us, they do certain things for us, and we also release that blessing upon them. If you don't want somebody's blessing, um, he will keep his blessing. Amen. But if you want it, then it comes to you. So, let us read from Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 2. Let's look in the Bible. All these blessings will come on you and accompany you if you obey the Lord your God. So, God has a lot of blessings, but they are activated or they come upon your life if you obey him. Hallelujah. If you decide to obey him, he releases his blessings upon you. And if you read throughout the Bible, you see that God tells his people to choose the blessing or the curse. And it's a choice. You see, many of us, we are not receiving the blessing of God not because God is not willing to bless us, but because we have made a decision. We have made a choice of not taking the blessing of God. Hallelujah. Why am I saying that? Because the Bible makes us understand that the blessing is always connected with obedience. And the curse is always connected with disobedience. Now, I, it, this is one thing that really I cannot understand. I cannot understand us as Christians, as believers, born again believers, who know the word of God, who understand the word of God, who know what God has said concerning his blessing in his word, yet we choose, hallelujah, we choose the things that will bring us a curse instead of the things that will bring us a blessing, hallelujah. Let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 11. 26 to 28. I mean, this will give you a lot of information. And from tonight, you would have to really make a decision on the choices that you have to make. Hallelujah. I remember not too long ago, and uh, I, I don't really have time tonight to really go into that, but um, I, 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 I did a message, uh, choices and consequences, and Every choice that you make has a consequence. So either you choose to obey, which has its consequences, or you choose to disobey, which has its consequences. Let's look at what the Bible says. See, I'm setting before you today a blessing and a curse. Hallelujah. God is saying that, see, I am setting before you today. And if you are listening to me, this is the word of God for you. God is setting before you today, not tomorrow, not yesterday, not the day after tomorrow, but today, as it is called today, God is saying that I am setting before you today a blessing and a curse. How do you assess the blessing and how do you assess the curse? And he goes on to say that the blessing, if you obey the commands of the Lord, your God, that I am giving you today. Hallelujah. Listen, a blessing and a, a curse have been set before you. Now, the conditions to assess the blessing is if you obey the commands of the Lord, your God, that I'm giving you today. How can you then assess the curse? The curse, that is, 
you the choice of the curse if you disobey the commands of the Lord your God and turn from the way that I command you today and in all instances you see the word today so <laughs> listen <laughs> can you give me I'll come back to this but don't worry uh, uh, Second uh, Corinthians chapter 6 verse 2 For he says, in the time of my favor, I heard you. And in the day of salvation, I helped you. I tell you, now is the time of God's favor. Now is the day of salvation. Now, listen carefully. Now, today, to, you see, you have to make a decision today. It is, yes, the day is fast spent. But as long as you have life, and as long as you are listening to me tonight, I want you to make a decision. Hallelujah. You ought to make a decision. A decision to really attract the curses of that, the blessing of the Lord. Hallelujah. You see, we can always say what is in Galatians, that he was cursed so that we will become a blessing. Cursed is everyone who is hanged on the tree. We can say that and think that well, the fact that we said that and Jesus really went to the cross to really carry our curses and then release the blessing unto us. You can say that and say it, I mean, the way you want it. But the point is that you can activate that word only if you obey or disobey. Because if you obey, then the curse goes on the cross and the blessing is released from the cross to you. Hallelujah. But if you disobey, then you keep your curse. Hallelujah. So, what we need to understand is that many of us are praying that, and, and we have prayed and prayed and God is not listening. It's not like God is not listening to us. God has released a blessing upon us. But the point is that, are you assessing the blessing that God has released or you are not assessing it? Now, the condition to assess the blessing is obedience. Hallelujah. The condition to assess the blessing is that you ought to obey the commands of the Lord your God. As simple as that. Hallelujah. I always say that, Bible says so many things. I mean, it, like in, um, there's a, a scripture that really I love in the Bible. Luke chapter 6, verse 38. Can you quickly give me that scripture? Luke 6, 38. Give and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Now, watch this. Give. And it will what? Be given unto you. Same measure. A good measure. Pressed down. Shaking together. Running over. Hallelujah. Now, what you need to understand is that God is asking you as a believer, and this is Jesus' words, and Jesus says that, give. So people, some people say that Jesus never spoke about giving. No. He says, give, and it shall be given unto you. But how many of us are willing to obey this? And even at the end of it, he says that for with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. The measure you use. Hallelujah. So if you use uh, a milk tin, a milk tin will be used for you. If you use a bucket, a bucket will be used for you. So, and these are not my words. I just want you to really understand that. Take the notes. Take the notes. And after all this, take your time and then read the Bible. We, we are reading it, but you ought to... I am trying to let you understand that blessings have been released already. Hallelujah. Wherever you are, the blessing of God has been released already. And you can assess that blessing. Is blessing only about, about money and no. The blessing of health is there. The blessing of, uh, of, of 
of you having peace is there the blessing blessing is released in diverse forms hallelujah you can really be blessed in such a way that you will not even get sick you will not go to the hospital hallelujah you can be blessed in a way that you would not know pain you can be blessed in a way that you will have peace in your life. That when there is chaos everywhere, you just ask yourself, what's going on? And everybody say, but are you the only stranger in Jerusalem? And you will be there, but you will not even, what people are talking about, it's not like you are ignorant. You are aware, but it doesn't affect you. Because your confidence and your faith in God brings you that kind of peace. Hallelujah. So, God wants to release a new cycle of blessing unto us. But we need to understand that we ought to obey. It can only be released. The blessing of God can only come to you in a place of obedience. So you have to, if you want to activate the blessing of God, you need to begin to live in obedience. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Every single act of uh, obedience really activates and releases a cycle of blessings upon our lives. Hallelujah. And if we really choose, if we choose to disobey, it also releases a cycle of curses upon our lives. Amen. Okay. So what is obedience? Because I need to know what obedience is so I can obey and activate the blessing over my life. So what is obedience? The Oxford Dictionary says compliance with an order, request, or law, or submission to another's authority. You need to comply. You need to comply to an order or uh, a request or law. Or you submit to another's authority. In this case, God's authority. God's word is his authority. God's word is his law. God's word is his order. And you need to really comply with it. A free dictionary says that duty, dutifully complying with the commands, orders, or instructions of one in authority. And in this case, the one in authority is not me. But the one in authority who releases and triggers the blessing is the God Almighty. Hallelujah. He is the one that is in charge. He is the one who releases the blessing. He is the one who causes the blessing to come to us. Amen. So simply put, obedience is listening in order to obey. Submission to authority by choice. And an act of the will. You see, this is by choice. So, you can choose to obey or disobey. Hallelujah. I said you can choose to do what? It's a choice. Hallelujah. I said it's what? You can choose to obey or disobey. The choice that you make will really activate a cycle of blessing or a cycle of curse. Hallelujah. I said, the choice that you make will either release a cycle of blessing or a cycle of uh, curse. It is between obedience and disobedience. And we are choosing to obey. So it's a choice. I can decide to obey or not to obey. You can decide to obey or not to obey. But the point is that, for example, if you are a student and you are in a school and they said that, okay, uh, lights out is probably at 10 p.m. And anyone who doesn't sleep at 10 p.m. will be punished. It's a choice. Hallelujah. The order has been given, but you have the right to obey or disobey. And the one who made the law, the one in authority, now the choice that you make, hallelujah, I said the choice that you make will also allow him to make his own choices as well, whether to dis uh, punish you 
or not to punish you. Because if you make the right choice of obe- obedience, then there is no punishment for you. Because what it, the law says is that if you do A, you get A. If you do B, you get B. Hallelujah. So it depends on what you choose. The choice that you make determines whether you receive a curse or a blessing. Hallelujah. And throughout the Bible, we really see that any time, uh, I mean, we make, um, we make a choice or a decision to obey regarding finances and uh, is when we make that decision to pay our tithes and our offerings. Hallelujah. So what is going to trigger the blessing of finances in your life is what you make. That's why the Bible says that honor me with what? With your tithes and with your offerings. And as you do that, I'm going to release the blessing upon you. Hallelujah. Let, let's look quickly at uh, Proverbs chapter 3 verse 9. Quickly. Are we there? Okay. Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of your crops. And then what happened? Then! Hallelujah. So the choice to honor him, then your barns will be filled to overflowing and your vat will brim over with new wine. So it's a choice to honor God with your wealth, to offer. Hallelujah. That's exactly what we read in uh, Luke chapter 6, verse 38 as well. If you give, it will trigger uh, 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 an opening of blessing over your life. Hallelujah. So, like I said, it's a choice that you have to make. And one thing that, as a Christian, I always keep asking myself is, uh, if this is true, which I believe is true, why is it that Christians are unwilling to obey. Hallelujah. We are praying for something. And God is saying that what we are praying for, it's okay. And it has a blessing that comes with it that will be released to us. But it is not just about the prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is not just about the prayer, but about what? About our obedience. It's about our obedience. If you pray and you still live in disobedience, the blessing does not come. Now, what are we doing tonight? We are looking at how we can walk in the blessing and favor of God. The blessing has been released Favor has been released, but how can we walk in it? How can it be activated? How can we really appropriate what God has said concerning blessings? Hallelujah. So, where should obedience come from? Where should obedience come from? Where should obedience come from? We look at two places that obedience comes from. Number one is obedience comes from a love for God. Obedience comes from a love for God. If you love God, you are more than willing to obey Him. Hallelujah. If you love Him, you will obey His commands. John 15, 14. John 14, 15, sorry. 14, 15. John 14, 15. If you love me, keep my commands. If you love God, he says, keep his commands. 14.23 Jesus replied, anyone who loves me, hallelujah, will do what? Will obey my teaching. His teaching is his commands. My father will love them and we will come to If you love me, you will obey me. 
So, if you love God, you will do what? Obey God. So, obedience comes from a place of love of God. If you love God, you are willing to obey him. If you love him and care about him, then whatever he says, you are willing to obey. Hallelujah. First John chapter 5 verse 3. First John chapter 5 verse 3. We, we need to understand, beloved in the Lord, I want you to really understand these principles because there is so much blessing in God that has been released, yet we are Christians, but we're not assessing these blessings. The blessing of good health, the blessing of peace, we are not assessing any of those. Why? Because we don't obey him. Hallelujah. In fact, this is love for God. To keep his commands. And his commands are not burdensome. Hallelujah. To keep his commands. If you love him, you will keep his commands. And he says that this is the love for God. Do you love him? If you love him, you will obey the commands. If you love God, I said you will obey his commands. Because if you love someone, you don't want to offend that person. Hallelujah. If you love your father, whatever he says, you don't want to offend him. So you try to really do what your father wants you to do. If you love him, if you love someone, you tend to really do certain things for the person out of place. You just do it. Just, you just show that love through obe obeying what the person is telling you. Hallelujah. So, love for God will motivate obedience. Hallelujah. Love for God. Love for God. If you love him, you are willing to do what he's saying you should do. Now, how many of us love God? Your love for him will manifest in your obedience to his word. Your love for God will be seen in how much you obey God. Hallelujah. What are we saying? If love will trigger obedience and obedience activates blessing, what are we saying? All that we're trying to say tonight is if you love God, you will obey him. And if you obey him, his blessing will come upon you. Hallelujah. If you love God, you will obey God. And if you obey God, his blessings will be released upon your life. So as you are watching me tonight, begin to reflect. Begin to, be, I mean, reflect on what I'm saying. And in your life, begin to ask yourself, am I living in obedience to the word of God? Do I really love God? And if I love God, Am I living in obedience to his word? Hallelujah. But the multi-question is that, do I even know his word? Do I know his word? If you love him, you will desire to know his word. And you will then obey his word and that will help you to appropriate the blessing that he has really released upon every believer. Hallelujah. Okay. <laughs> Many of us say that we love. We love God. But any love, I mean, however you really 
say that you love him. No matter what you say, you can say because nobody will charge you for saying it. No matter how you say it, it will have to be seen in your obedience. If you say you love, yet you don't obey him, that love is false. Because if you watch carefully, if you love someone, you don't want to hurt that person. You don't want to offend that person. Hallelujah. So if you really indeed love him, yet disobey him, your love has a question mark. Number two. So number one is, uh, what, where should love, obedience come from? Obedience comes from a love for God. And number two is that obedience comes from faith in God. If you have faith in God, it's easy for you to obey him. You trust him. And it's easy for you to obey. Hallelujah. Because if you have faith in me, when I say something to you, it's easy for you to obey what I'm saying. Hallelujah. If you have faith in me, if you have confidence in me, hallelujah, when I say something to you, it is easy for you to really obey what I'm saying because you have confidence in what I'm saying and you are willing to obey. Because if I tell you something and if you don't trust me and you don't have confidence in me and you don't have faith in me, then you really will rubbish it and will not really follow it. You would obey it. Hallelujah. But if you have faith in me, what I say, it will be easy for you to obey. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bible makes us see that, I mean, because of the faith that we have in, in, in God, we are able to obey what he's saying. Hallelujah. For example, I'm going to show you something. Man has faith in a chair. And therefore, because of the faith that we have, that this chair is solid, and when I sit on it, I'm not going to fall down. If you tell me to sit on it, it's easy for me to obey and sit down. Hallelujah. If I don't really, I mean, if you tell me to sit down, and I know how dubious you are, and I know how, how you play tricks, I'm going to check and make sure that this is solid enough to carry me before I sit down. Hallelujah. But if, 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 you, if I have confidence in you, I am able easily to do what you want me to do. Because I trust you and I have confidence in you that what you are saying is true. And you are not going to trick me. Hallelujah. If you, have a, if you have faith in someone, it's easy for you to obey that person. Hallelujah. It's that simple. Now, if we have faith in God, then it's going to be easy to obey God. But if you don't have faith in God, then it will be tough and difficult for you to obey him. Hallelujah. When God told Abraham, go and kill your son, he had faith in God, so he went. Hallelujah. He obeyed because he had faith in him. If he didn't have faith in God, he wouldn't obey. And if you obey, if you have faith in him and obey him, it really releases a cycle of blessing upon your life. Why are you saying that? Because the Bible says so. The Bible says so. In Deuteronomy 11, 26 and 28. Hallelujah. I'm setting before you today a blessing and a curse. 
How do you ask, uh, assess that blessing? He said, the blessing if you obey the commands of the Lord your God that I'm giving you today. Simple. You will assess the blessing, that cycle of blessing, if you live in obedience. And if faith is going to, if my faith in God is going to help me to obey him, then it means that my faith in God will help me to really assess my blessing from God. Hebrews 11.6. Hebrews 11.6. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Now, do you have faith in this word? Do you believe that what God has said is true? Then you will obey this command. And if you obey his word, what is happening is that he's saying that if you have faith enough to please him, and if you have faith enough to come to him, you must believe that he is there. And what he has said is that he will reward those who earnestly seek him. So what you are going to do is you are endlessly going to seek him. Wow. Wow. If you endlessly seek him, there is a reward for you. Reward is a reward. Reward is a good thing. It can come in diverse forms. It can come in finances. It can come in uh, peace. It can come in good health. It can come. It will come in diverse ways. Hallelujah. But I want you to really know these keys so that you will begin from tonight to live in obedience to God. By loving him and also doing what? Having faith in him. So that the blessings of God will be released into your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, listen again. The topic for tonight is to how to walk in the blessing and favor of God. Hallelujah. Favor. Favor. Now, we know how we can assess the blessing of God. Now, let's look at favor. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 2, verse 52. And Jesus grew in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man. Hallelujah. Every one of us needs favor from God. Every one of us needs favor with God. And Jesus as a man, as he walked on earth, needed favor with God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to really understand. You see, the the problem with us is that many of us, we think that everything can be just, I mean, once it is said, amen. Once it is said, it is is for us. Yes, it is for you. But there is a, a condition to really assess it. There's a condition to assess it. If you don't really meet that condition, the blessing, it's it's just like salvation. Salvation has been released. It's free of charge. You don't have to really pay for your salvation. Why is it that not everyone is saved? Because it wasn't released for some people and some people were left. Salvation, God released salvation for everyone. It's Jesus died for everyone. It didn't die for uh, uh, some group of people. He died for everyone. But the only thing that will let you assess that blessing that come out of uh, his uh, death, which is the freedom for you to be reconciled to God, that is salvation for you and for me, is for you to believe that he's the son of God. He died and he rose on the third day. Hallelujah. And you believe and you accept. And it becomes yours. Some people have still not believed. And because of that, even though salvation is free for everyone, they still don't have salvation. Amen. So if you are a believer, you have to do something. It is not 
to pay something or eat something or do something. It's just for you to accept it and it becomes yours. When you accepted it, it became yours. In the same way, when you obey him, the blessing becomes yours. Hallelujah. And the favor of God comes upon you. Hallelujah. None of us can live on this world without the favor of God. It's not, I mean, you will not be able to really assess certain things. Hallelujah. So your favor with God should be the same as the favor you have with man. Amen. That is why we all pray, give me what? God give me favor with man. I pray that prayer all the time. And I, I mean, I, I know any time I give a benediction, I, I, I release that. May God give us his favor and favor with all men. Hallelujah. What does favor mean? Favor simply means divine access. Hallelujah. Divine access. Hallelujah. So all favor that comes from God gives you divine access. If a favor is coming from God, it will give you divine access to places that under normal circumstances you will not be able to enter. I have really assessed that kind of divine uh, uh, access. I have really had it in my life. I know many people who, I mean, there are things that um, had it not been God's favor, God's favor that would open certain doors for you, you would never really have received it. I mean, maybe you are a superman and you could get it. But I know that without God's favor, there there are many things that by the grace of God are in my life. If favor has not really come into play, And that is why grace is unmerited favor. Hallelujah. Unmerited divine access. Amen. Because, listen, favor is divine access. Grace is unmerited favor. So it's unmerited divine access. An access that you did not deserve. Hallelujah. You did not merit. You did not do anything to really get it. Hallelujah. There There are times that you ask yourself, What did I do to receive this? What did I do to receive this? Beloved in the Lord, you know, God really appreciates certain things. And if we do certain things, we begin to really receive certain favors. Hallelujah. God's favor will give you access to people, to places, to things that you would normally not be able to access. Hallelujah. But all this, hallelujah, all this favor will come or will be activated or will be assessed by obedience. If you obey God, you begin to assess God's um, favor. Hallelujah. And I want you to really understand that Samuel, it is not only, um, let's look at 1 Samuel 2.26. 1 And the boy Samuel continued to grow in stature and in favor with the Lord and with people. Now, if you look at um, Luke 2.52 and 1 Samuel 2.26, it's the same thing. Hallelujah. Why, why did Jesus receive the same thing that Samuel? You know, Samuel, as he lived with Eli, lived in total obedience. Beloved, let me tell you something. It doesn't matter. Who, many young people say that, oh, yeah, it's because me, as for me, my family, there is nothing. Oh, so if you don't know people, you, don't, you, you won't get this. I'm telling you, if God's favor is upon your life, he is going to open doors. You are going to really assess certain things that you will not normally be able to. You will see that places that you think that, oh, you need to have a certain name. You need to have a certain stature. You need to have a certain thing before you can assess. You will be able because of your obedience to God. Hallelujah. Your obedience to God will open doors for you that under normal circumstances, those doors will not be open for you. Because your obedience to God will really bring the favor of God upon your life. And when the favor of God up is upon your life, on two occasions in the Bible, Bible says, I mean, it says about um, Samuel, and it says the same about Jesus, that both of them, 
they had favor with the Lord and with people. Favor with the Lord and with people. If you will miss anything, don't miss the favor of God. And if you want anything, if you want to gain anything, if you want to gain, I mean, access to people, favor with people, seek for the favor of God. The, the mistake that many of us do is that, and let me tell you this, this, is, this, this will really open your eyes. And I want you to really understand this today. Watch it. If don't go to men trying to really please them to get favor from them. Begin to live in obedience to God. Now, when you live in obedience to God and you find favor with God, God now, I'm telling you, if God tells Mr. A to open a door for you, Mr. A will open that door. Hallelujah. If Mr. A decides not to open that door, God will give you a favor with a donkey to open that door for you. The point is that if God decides to open a door, if you have favor with God and God decides to give you favor in certain instances or in certain places in your life, no one can stop you. Hallelujah. Unfortunately, we don't seek the favor of men. We begin to, uh, we don't seek the favor of God, but we begin to seek the favor of men. That is one big, huge mistake with believers. As Christians, we tend to really please men because we see them. So we want to really, oh yeah, do stuff for them to gain their favor. Beloved, let me tell you something. Begin to seek the favor of God. As you seek the favor of God, people who you think you never had favor with will now tell you that, I don't know why I have to do this for you, but I just feel that I have to do it for you. Hallelujah. They will tell you, I don't know. I mean, I don't understand. It doesn't make sense. Why am I doing this for you? I don't even understand. But if I don't, I don't feel good. I just, I just feel I have to do this for you. Hallelujah. If God touches them to do it, beloved, they have no choice. That is why sometimes you see your worst enemy blessing you. Hallelujah. Your, best, your worst enemy will bless you. Why will you receive a blessing from your worst enemy? He's doing something he doesn't even understand. Why I have to do? I, I, have, I have seen it before. Hallelujah. I have experienced it before. And the person later on was saying that, why did I do that? I said, I don't know, but you did it. Are you sure? Of course, it happened. <laughs> Amen. You did it, but I can't explain why you did what you did. Amen. I can, I, I can give you examples after examples in my personal life. Things that I have received that in reality I did not have the right to get those things. Hallelujah. And, and God, once God really touches that, look, people will beg you to receive a blessing. You don't want the blessing and the people are begging you, oh, please take it, take it, take it. And I have seen it in my life. Hallelujah. I don't have time to go into details. I would have gone into details after details for you. Because it is something. If I stand here today to speak to you, it is favor. It's God's favor. Hallelujah. So you need to understand. If I, I mean, I can't, I said, I cannot really uh, go into details because of time. Amen. So, the favor of God is assessed by obedience to God. And if you obey God and you assess his obedience, uh, you assess, sorry, you assess his favor, you begin to assess the favor of men. Wherever you go, people look at you and you look special, you look different. And you begin, they begin to get, give you favors. Let me tell you something. It happened only... What was that? October. I think late September, for, uh, early October. We, me and my wife had traveled and we had prayed. 
we were traveling from one city to the other. And when we got to the airport, <laughs> that, that's kind of interesting. When we got to the airport, the plane landed. I picked my phone to call the hotel to check whether they have a shuttle to the airport. And they said the distance is long, so they don't have a shuttle. Then my wife asked me, what did they say? I said, they said they don't have a shuttle, so we have to take uh, an Uber. When we get down, we need to really. So I was just going to really uh, uh, um, request for an Uber ride on my phone. Then someone who, who was just sitting on the next side asked me, where are you going? Then I just said it, and he said, I'll take you. And I was like, are you sure? Then he goes like, yes, I'm sure. Then I said, we are Ghanaians. We have plenty bags. <laughs> because, and he said, don't worry. We were, we were like, what's going on here? So we got down. And when we got down from the plane and we go to where we're going to pick our bags, he had only one just carry-on bag. So he just picked it. And then he said that, I'm going to bring the car. Then he told us, it's a, it's a, it's a gray Mercedes. And, uh, so I thought it was a van or something. Okay. So we went there. And this guy, I mean, we took our bags. We were standing on the curb waiting. And this guy came. And then he parked. Sleek SLK. Hallelujah. And I looked at the car and I said, this box can't fit in the car. And he goes like, no, it, it will fit. Listen to me carefully. I didn't know this guy from Adam. And then this guy now begins to pack his things in his car to really take our bags. And the bags were big bags because we had bought things for our son in school and for other people. And then, so, he... We packed everything, and when we moved, I asked him, I mean, like, what's your name? Because I don't even know your name. And he said, I'm, uh, I mean, in Spanish, it's George, but it's Jorge or whatever. Or, or gay, or gay. So it's, it means George. So I said, okay, I'm also called George. And then we got into a conversation. This is a, a um, I don't know, uh, I mean, he's a medical guy, and he's, uh, he works with GE. And uh, I mean, he's, uh, and I'm looking, I'm listening to all that he's saying. And he drove us to the hotel, helped us to bring our bags from, the, uh, from his car, and then left. Hallelujah. If actually, he went to, when we got to the hotel, he went inside to bring the, uh, I mean, car to pick. And I was just looking at this guy. And I was asking myself, God, what did we do to deserve this? What did we do? I sent him an email and I said, I didn't know there were still people like that in the world. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because we didn't do anything. We, I mean, seriously. I mean, I, I was looking at his car and I'm looking at my, our bags and I'm saying that this guy is going to mess his car because of our bags. And he didn't care in the least. He just did what he had to do. Hallelujah. Beloved in the Lord, what I'm trying to say is that when the favor of God is upon you, you get favor with men. And those certain doors are open to you. And that's why I'm saying that it's not always with cash. It is with other things in life. It can be peace. It can be, I mean, you can really receive the favor of God in diverse areas. You can receive the blessing of God in diverse areas. Hallelujah. In fact, you can be there and for the whole year, you will not even have a headache. It's a blessing. Hallelujah. You, you see, let me tell you something. You're going to places that by this time, had it not been the favor of God and the blessing of God, you will be testing positive, positive, positive for COVID. But you are free. So it's not, you know, some people, they haven't had all this. And they're still complaining, when is God going to bless me? He's blessed you. 
That's why you haven't, uh, you haven't tested positive. That is why you are healthy. That is why the whole of last year you, need, you never went to the hospital. Are we better than those who went to the hospital? Are those people, don't, uh, do, I mean, those people, don't they also have the blessing of God or the favor of God? That's none of my business. My business is that the blessing of God has found me. The favor of God is upon my life. Hallelujah. Dear, I pray for them, but the point is that I know that I have gone to places, I have done certain things that probably should have made me sick. If I'm still not sick and I'm still strong and I'm still alive, it's the favor of God. It's the blessing of God. Hallelujah. Because he protects me and keeps me and watches over me. Hallelujah. Okay, now let's look at three keys. Three keys to walk in favor. Three keys to walk in favor. Number one is favor comes uh, according to your assignment. What is the assignment God has given to you? Hallelujah. You see, there are certain favors. It comes with only the assignment God has given to you. And this type of favor that God gives to a person, uh, 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 I mean, he gives you a specific assignment. And he gives you a specific, a specific favor that goes with that kind of assignment. Hallelujah. He gives you a specific assignment and he will give you a specific favor that goes with that assignment. So you see, you will be going to, you are all pastors, you go to places and you will get a certain kind of favor that others will not have. Hallelujah. Not because they are bad people. But because of the assignment God has given you, God has to open those doors for you to be able to assess that kind of favor from those people, those men, or the blessing from those places. Hallelujah. So if you are not really, you've not had an assignment in that area, you will realize that you will be struggling. Let, let me give you a typical example. If God gives you, for example, uh, um, what's his name? Philip's assignment, listen carefully, Philip's assignment to um, the Ethiopian Enoch, it doesn't matter if Peter had gone, probably he wouldn't have had the same access to the Ethiopian Enoch as Philip had. But because Philip's assignment was to really go and teach that guy, that Ethiopian Enoch, to understand what he was re reading because it was God's assignment for him, he got a direct favor with that man. So as he began to walk by the thing, the man began to really, oh, now explain it to me. Hallelujah. It could have been, you could have gone there. It's not your assignment, so you will not have that favor. Listen to me. Many people are going into certain places because somebody got there and got a certain favor. They think that they also have to have the same favor. That's not your assignment. God has not called you there. And if you try it, you will be disgraced. You go there, you don't understand why you don't have the favor Mr. Pastor A had or Mr. A had. It's because of his assignment. Hallelujah. Because of his assignment. Because it is his assignment, as soon as he gets there, he has to get favor with the people there. And that is what we call direct favor from God. Hallelujah. It's, it's really connected to the assignment that you have. What is your assignment? Hallelujah. What is your assignment? Your assignment will cause you to receive a certain favor that everyone else will not receive. They may, they may have a better degree than you have. They may have a better uh, um, um, connection than you have, but they will still never be able to assess that kind of favor because their assignment is not in that place. Amen. So, you need to know, if you want to really receive the direct favor of God, you need to know your assignment. Don't just walk into places. Pray first. Amen. There's another type of uh, um, favor that is called extended favor. And that favor, l listen to me, you, it's extended to you because of the one that 
for example, in, in like in our ministry, hallelujah, because I have favor with my spiritual father in Miami, amen, I, you can have that kind of extended favor, hallelujah. God has given me favor and he has my, the favor of God upon my life has given me favor with my spiritual father. So what happens is that because of the, that favor that I have, that favor can be extended to you because you are, you are my son and my daughter. Hallelujah. So if you get there because of the favor I have over there, because of God's favor of, um, upon my life, that is extended to you, you can have that same favor when you get there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we have extended favor. And extended favor can only be had or, uh, by, by the fact that you get it from uh, the, the spiritual authority that you are under. And God extends that favor over to you. Amen. Amen. Okay. Second key, second key. So the first key is that it comes according to your assignment. Second key is that it comes out of friendliness, your friendships. Hallelujah. Proverbs 18, 24. One who has unreliable friends soon comes to ruin. But there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Look, Jonathan and David. That friendship really brought certain favors upon David's life. To the extent that his life was spared. Hallelujah. His life was spared. Because Jonathan was had a very, very close friendship, and that friendship was even probably stronger than a, a, a friendship of brother, 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 brothers. Hallelujah. Because you can't, you can't, I, I, I know people who are, they have friends who are so close to their friends, even than their own family members. Hallelujah. And that kind of friendship could open certain doors and certain favors over your life. Hallelujah. Now, what am I saying? If you show yourself friendly, even towards God, God you attract God's favor. And if you are obedient again, and you begin to really uh, uh, show friendship, very good cordial friendship to people that God, wa- God leads you to, you begin to attract certain favors from God. And those favors, I mean, you begin, those favors are extended and you can get favors from certain people because of the friendships that you have. Hallelujah. There are certain friendships that will only send you to, uh, into trouble. But there are other friendships, godly friendships, that will open divine opportunities for you divine favors, divine blessings even unto your life. Who is your friend? Who is your friend? Hallelujah. Who is your friend? And how do you really uh, relate to people? How friendly are you? Hallelujah. How friendly are you? I don't know, but I just want you to really understand tonight that friendships friendships can really bring divine favor. Hallelujah. Number three. And we're going to close very soon. Number three. Favor is the reward for your obedience. Hallelujah. I'll, I'll share a story with you. Do you realize that there are times that you'll be in a group of people, you'll be in, in a group, 
and suddenly you'll be picked out of the group and be blessed. There'll be a queue, you'll be at the back, and then they'll pick you out. Hallelujah. You'll be in, in, a, in a place, and, and this, I've seen this a couple of times. You know, you'll be in a queue, a very long queue. It happens to, it has happened to me like a couple of times uh, uh, in immigration queues. I mean, you are just way back there, and then suddenly, the, the guy who is controlling the queue comes, and then he opens another place, and he says, yeah, from this one, come and pass here. And then you become number one instead of number 30. <laughs> Hallelujah. Suddenly, you become number one. Favor. Hallelujah. When it happens, normally I, I travel with my wife. So when it, it, it happens like that, she looks at my face. I look at her face and we say, glory be to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. We say, glory be to God. I'll give you a very interesting one. This was way back when um, uh, the former president was alive. Uh, Prophet, uh, uh, president uh, Atta Mills. You know, he lives uh, at Reg Manuel Estate. That's where we live. And I remember... There was, I don't know what this, uh, 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 because of, uh, uh, because he was living there, there was always this moto uh, escort uh, bikes really around the area. And I was traveling, and my wife was taking me to the airport. And the traffic, the spring test traffic that day was horrible. And on, during those days, you know, the, 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 the new road uh, from Palace, the, it had not been constructed. So everyone has to go through Tatakwashi, you go and up there and then descend and all that. And the traffic, those days you can take three hours to, from Regimano to the airport. I mean, it's so bad. And that was one of those bad days. And it has taken us like an hour to drive from home to around the uh, Bank of Ghana, you know, the Palace roundabout. And we were just in front of the Bank of Ghana. And we were, we were talking about this traffic. And all that we were saying was that, God, help me so that I don't, I don't miss my flight. Help me so that I don't miss my flight. So we were going. I was driving. My wife was sitting by me. And then suddenly, as we were discussing and saying, God, help us, God, help us. Suddenly, there was a dispatch rider by our side. And then I didn't even see. All that I heard was, because I was talking to my wife, I heard, co -co 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 -co. then I turned. Then it was a dispatch rider. I thought I had done something wrong. You know, sometimes God is coming to bless me, and, and then you think you've done something wrong because it's a policeman. And, I mean, I was in the queue, and I knew I hadn't done anything wrong. So I was reluctant, but I just brought my window down. And as soon as I brought my window down, the guy asked me, where are you going? And I said, I'm going to the airport. He said, follow me. He said, follow me. I looked at my wife, and she looked at me, and the guy just, and then I just got out, and then I followed him. Then he put his siren on. And then I, I, I put my hazard on, and I was following this guy. And my wife was shivering because the, the way the guy was going like this, like this, I had to drive like I was crazy. Hallelujah. And I was trying, and you know, it's a big car, it's a V8, it's a big car, and you have to just, and, and I was following this guy, and I'm following this guy. So he really took me to Tetekwashi, went up there, came down, we went to the, um, how do you call it? Uh, yeah, yeah, the polo area, but yeah, we took that, that junction, we went to the polo area, that round, near round about there, we went, and as soon as we went further a little bit, there was no traffic there, there was nothing there, then he stopped. So when we got there, he said, is this okay? I said, yes. And I said, what's your name? Then he laughed. What's your number? He laughed. And then he took the, uh, and he just rode away. He didn't give me his name. Neither did he give me his number. And he just left. And he said, go. Hallelujah. If this is not favor, I don't know what it is. Hallelujah. Because I knew I was going to miss my flight. And the traffic was so bad. Yet, I was able to get the favor of God that was upon my life to trigger a favor before a man, a moto uh, dispatch rider, to really come, take us out of the queue, and then take us there. Hallelujah. If this is not favor, I don't know what it is. I cannot describe 
the joy that we had. But this guy did not give us his number, neither did he give us his name. I thought he was an angel of God. Dressed as a policeman. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because, I, I, I mean, I, I can't explain it, but that's what happens. Hey, Amen. When you have the favor of God upon your life. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. What do you think will activate favor? What do you think will activate favor? You know, favor is like honor. And God says in 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 30, he says, I will honor those who honor me. So if you honor God, you will receive a certain favor over your life. A certain kind of honor over your life. Hallelujah. Therefore, the Lord, the God of Israel declares, I promise that members of your family would minister before me forever. But now, the Lord declares, far be it from me, those who honor me, I will honor. But those who despise me will be disdained. Those who honor me. If you honor God, God will honor you. Hallelujah. If you honor God, you will receive the favor of God. The blessing of God will come upon your life. There are times, you know, many of us do not understand certain things that happen in the Bible. Look, when Isaac was about to die, he asked Esau, honor me and I will bless you. That was his father. You will ask, why would the father ask a son? Why wouldn't he bless him, but will ask him to honor him first? Honor me with the best meal. I know your skill. I know you are a good hunter. I know you can get the best of game. Honor me and then I'll favor you. I'll release the blessing upon your life. Hallelujah. The widow and the son. They honored Elijah with what they had. And God made Elijah bless them. Peter honored Jesus with his boat. And he received a blessing. Bible says that he asked, he asked him to really speak from his boat. And as he spoke from that boat and he finished, he said, okay, this is my blessing because you honored me. I asked you for it. You didn't hold it back for me. You gave it to me. This is, it's my turn to bless you. And he said, cast your nets. And he got a lot of fishes. Hallelujah. Honor will activate favor. Many of us, it's difficult for us to honor. Many of us, it's so tough for us to honor. Bible says that give honor to those who honor is due. And if you do that, you will be favored. Many of us don't know how to do that. But tonight, I want you to really understand that certain things have really caused and one major thing that has caused your blessing to be delayed is your disobedience to God. 
I'm going to give you an opportunity to repent and begin to ask God for forgiveness. And then we will all pray for God to give us the grace to begin to walk and live in obedience. And as we begin to do that, we will begin to receive the blessing and the favor of God. The key to what we're doing tonight is we ought to begin to obey the God who has called us. If we begin to live in obedience to him, the things that have been tough in your life, that have been difficult in your life, the blessings that you've been seeking for that has never come, if you begin to walk in total obedience to God, you will begin to see that things are shifting. Some will happen overnight. Some will take time. Because, and, and I just want you to really listen to this. God knows your heart before you do it. If you think that it's like lottery and because, oh yeah, hey, they said if you do this, uh, I'm going to get this, so I'm going to do it and then get it, please. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about you living in total obedience to him. Living in obedience as a lifestyle. Not a one-off thing. Not just going to do it today so I can get a blessing. You know, when you go to the ATM, when you have your card, you put it in, you take money. When you don't need the ATM, you don't go there again. So when you need it, you go and slot it in. So you don't make God like your ATM. You slot it in, you slot in obedience, you get the reward, and then you run away. You go and live your life anyhow. And when you need another favor, you come and slot it in and you get it. No, it should be a lifestyle. You have to live in daily obedience. Constant, regular, every day. It's a daily thing. It's a lifestyle. Hallelujah. So what we're going to pray for is you're going to repent. Because if you repent, it means that you don't want to disobey him again. You want to live in obedience. And like I said earlier, one of the things that is going to really be key in this walk, that is going to really release favor and blessing, one of the key things is when you begin to study the word of God. Because how can you do when you don't know? If you don't know the word of God, how can you obey the word? You can only obey the word when you know it. Hallelujah. So if God is asking for our obedience, it means that he's also asking us to study the word. So we will know the word, and as we know the word, we begin to obey the word. And as we obey the word, the blessings and the favor begins to really be released upon our lives. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Beloved in the Lord, I want you to stand up wherever you are. I want you to stand. It's a sign of uh, your surrender to God. It's a sign that you really understand what we're doing and you are willing to really obey God. Hallelujah. I want you to really, wherever you are, in your own words, I want you to begin. And this is a choice as well. You know who you are, and I know who I am. You know whether you've lived in total obedience to God or you lived in disobedience to God. You know God's word. Have you been obeying God's word? Hallelujah. Have you been obeying God's word? If you obey, you know. If you don't obey, you know. And I want you to come before God and begin to pray and ask him. First, you tell him that, Lord, I repent. I accept my faults, and I repent. Begin to pray wherever you are. Begin to pray wherever you are. Pray that, Lord, I accept my faults, my weakness, my sins, and I repent of those sins. The sin of disobedience. I have disobeyed you. Tell God that I have disobeyed you. And from tonight, I come before you in repentance. Hallelujah. I repent of any disobedience. I repent of any disobedience. Pray unto the Lord. Pray unto the Lord that I repent of every disobedience, every single 
disobedient that I have been before you. I have disobeyed you in diverse ways and I am praying. Just be faithful. Open your heart unto him. Don't just use your lips. Don't just do it out of your lips. Let your heart get into this. Because you said that you, you honor me with your lips, but your hearts are far away from me. You repent with your lips, but your hearts are not in the repentance. If your heart is really in it, you will see that you begin to see a turnaround in your life. You will begin to really run away from the things. You begin to run away from disobedience. Pray and ask God, I repent of every disobedience, every disobedience in my life. Any way that I have disobeyed you, Lord, I repent. I repent of it and I don't want to go back to it. I don't want to go back. Tell him that I don't want to go back to it. I pray that forgive me. Ask him for forgiveness. Ask him for forgiveness as you repent. Ask him to forgive you every act of disobedience. Every single act of disobedience, ask him whether it was intentional or unintentional. Ask him to forgive you. Ask him to forgive you. Cry unto him this day and ask him in the name of Jesus to forgive you. Hallelujah. Now that he's forgiven you, I want you to make a commitment to him. You are a, your own choice of words. You know how you want to now be committed to obey him. You want to commit to obey him. And you want to really do it from the depths of your heart. Begin to cry before him. The Lord, I commit to you. From today, I commit to walk in obedience. I commit to walk in obedience. Tell him. Tell him. Tell him. Tell him. Tell him. Tell him that from today I commit to walk in obedience. He's forgiving you your disobedience as you have asked. Now just commit to him. The Lord, I, from today I just want to walk in obedience. I want to live in obedience. I want to live in obedience to your word. Cry to him. Make that commitment. Make that commitment. Now I want us to pray this. You say this after me. Father, I thank you for tonight. I thank you for every revelation that you've brought into my life. I confess tonight that I have lived in disobedience. Tonight, I'm sorry for disobeying you and not living according to your word. Tonight, I repent of every act of disobedience. I repent of every act of disobedience. And Lord, forgive me every act of disobedience. Forgive me, Lord. Do not count it against me. Tonight, I make a commitment to obey you all the days of my life. From tonight, I commit 
to walk in obedience to your word. Jesus, help me to know your word so I can live in obedience to it. I thank you that your spirit is here and he will help me so that from tonight I will live in obedience to you. Father, I thank you for your children. Spirit of God, as your children have repented before you tonight of every act of disobedience and have made a commitment to walk in obedience before you all the days of their lives. I pray tonight, and Lord, in the name of Jesus, I activate in the name of Jesus and declare a new cycle of blessing and favor upon their lives in the name of Jesus. I declare in the name of Jesus a new cycle of blessing and favor upon your children in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare it tonight as a child of God, as a priest of God, I declare over your life, wherever you are, in the name of Jesus, because of your commitment, because of your act of commitment, by the power in the name of Jesus, I release a new cycle of blessing and favor upon your life, beginning tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Wherever you are, in the name of Jesus, Spirit of God, release blessing in their finances. Release blessing in their health. Release blessing in the peace of their lives. Release blessing in their marriages. Release blessing in their education. Release blessing in every area of their lives in the name of of Jesus Christ. I release that blessing by the power in the name of Jesus over your life. A new cycle of blessing. I said a new cycle of blessing begins from tonight in your finances, in your health, in your marriage, in your children, in your education, in every aspect of your life, in your business, in your office. Favor is going to follow you. Favor is going to follow you. You are going to begin to receive favor from wherever you go. Every door that has been shut because of the favor of God upon your life shall be opened in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, thank you, Holy Spirit. Some people, I think it's students, Holy Spirit, may these students, in the name of Jesus, receive a special favor in the examinations, in the name of Jesus, special favor. In the name of Jesus. I said special favor. In the name of Jesus. Said in the name of Jesus. Some of your students will have some special favor. In their exams. In the name of Jesus. It will, it will not be normal. You will ask how the they. Because they have not been doing too good in class. But there is a favor that is coming upon them. You need to begin to release this favor upon your students. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Because it's favor in examinations. I said favor in examinations. Father, by the power in the name of Jesus. I release favor in examinations. Even in the name of Jesus Christ. Spirit of God. 
Many kids are worried, even because of what is going on. And they are afraid uh, of the, uh, the examination. They're going to write and they are writing and all that. But by the power in the name of Jesus, because of your obedience to God, because of your work with the Lord, because of, your, because of what you do for God, the favor of God is coming upon you. The blessing of God is coming upon you. And you are going to excel in that examination by the power in the name of Jesus. Spirit of God, I thank you. I know many, of, many people want a breakthrough in their finances, favor in their finances. I declare it upon you tonight in the name of Jesus. But there is a special favor and a special blessing for those writing examination. It's a special favor and blessing over people that are writing examination in the name of Jesus Christ. Begin, if you are watching me and you are a student, begin to live in obedience to the word of God. Begin to make a sudden, uh, you need to begin to repent before the God, the, the God that you serve. And begin to commit to be obeying him. And he says that I am going to release a special favor and blessing upon my children in examinations. In the name of Jesus, receive it now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Father, I bless you and I honor you tonight. I glorify you for all those people that are writing examinations. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus. John, I bless you in the name of Jesus. Receive a special favor. Receive a special blessing in the name of Jesus. May God show you his favor. May God show, Malaka Brukasindaya. May God show you his favor. In the name of Jesus, may the favor of God come upon you and may that favor overtake you. In the name of Jesus, may the favor and the blessing of God overtake you in Jesus' name. Father, we honor you tonight. We bless you and glorify you for how far you brought us. We pray that your peace shall be upon us. Your grace will abound over us. Spirit of God, let your will be done in Jesus' name. Amen. You are here tonight on this broadcast and you don't know Jesus. I want to give you an opportunity to really reconcile with him. If you, are, you knew Jesus but you have also gone away from him. I want to give you that opportunity to reconcile. And those who do not know him, I want to give you the opportunity to come to him. So if you are on this broadcast and you've heard me tonight and you want to assess the blessing of God, it's for his children. Hallelujah. It's for his children. And because you have really separated from him, you have not been really getting the blessing of God and you want to reconcile with him or you never knew him so many things were not going right and you want to come to Jesus, I give you this opportunity. If you are like that, the first group and the second group, whichever one you belong to, I want to give you this opportunity. And I want you tonight to make a decision to accept him. If you are like that and you want to accept him tonight, say this after me quickly. Father Jesus, I thank you tonight for the opportunity that you have given unto me. I accept that I'm a sinner and I have sinned against you. I repent of all my sins and I ask you to forgive me. As you forgive me, I make a commitment to serve you. So tonight, I accept you as the Savior and the Lord over my life. From tonight, I ask you to let your Holy Spirit come into my heart and live in me. So that tonight... I will begin to live for you and not to live for myself anymore. I thank you that you have heard me and you have forgiven me and you have accepted me and I am a son or your daughter in Jesus' name. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for those beautiful people as they have made this commitment unto you tonight, I pray in Jesus' name that you will accept them just as they are. 
and begin to work in them. As you have forgiven them, may you strengthen their faith and may you help them to walk in their newfound love. I pray in the name of Jesus, may they never go back, but may they from today faithfully obey you and live for you. I thank you. I honor you for these lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. I said if you made this decision, um, I want you to call this number. 059-225-1438. You can WhatsApp us. You can send us a, a, a Viber message. You can SMS us. And you can also call us. We have a gift for you. Please and please, we want to help you to, to walk in your newfound love. God loves you and he's really wanting to bless you. So I want you to really make uh, that call or send that message and we will get right back to you. Amen. The number is on the, on the, on the screen that you, uh, your phone or your computer or whatever you are having, the number is on the screen. So just take that number and call us or uh, SMS us or uh, send a WhatsApp message or a Viber message or however you want to really reach us. Do that and God will bless you. Amen. All right. We're going to the Lord's table. Beloved in the Lord, I want you to really understand that God Almighty wants us to come to his table and dine with him. And the Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said, this is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So then, beloved, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink from the cup. I want you to examine yourself. If there is anything in your life that hinders you, bring it before the Lord. He is a faithful God. And as we ask, he forgives us. He cleanses us and he makes us whole. May the Lord make you whole tonight and make you worthy to really dine with him. Pray wherever you are. Pray and ask God, forgive me and make me whole. Tell him anything that is in my life that makes me unworthy tonight. Father, I bring it before you. Take it away and make me worthy to dine with you tonight. Take your bread. Take your uh, juice or water or whatever and lift it up to the Lord as we pray over it. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for the bread and I thank you for the juice, for the water, whatever your children are holding. I pray right now, as we all lift it before you, may you bless it and may you cause your spirit to breathe the breath of life into the bread and into the juice. And in the name of Jesus, may you cause the bread to receive life and become the body of Christ, even as we hold it. And may you, as you breathe into uh, the wine, the juice, the water, the breath of life, may that which is in our hands become the blood of Jesus. And as we eat and drink, we proclaim the death of Jesus Christ 
until he comes again. May this bring us healing, freedom in our physical bodies in the name of Jesus. May every feeble body, may every feeble person, may every body that is weak, Father, even in the spirit and in the flesh, may they begin to receive strength as they eat the body of your beloved son, Jesus Christ. Beloved in the Lord, this is the body of Jesus Christ, which has life in it. Eat it with understanding, in obedience to God. Eat. Bible says that as often as we do this, we do it in remembrance of him. Beloved in the Lord, this is the blood of the lamb who was slain at Calvary for us. And this is the blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. As you drink this blood, may this blood be in your body the blood of Jesus and bring you new strength. May it heal you. May it wash you. May it cleanse you. And may it prepare you for greater works. This is the blood of the Lamb. Drink it in remembrance of the pain, suffering that Jesus had to go through to win for all of us the freedom that we enjoy today. Drink the blood of Jesus. And let's pray, Father, we thank you in Jesus' name. I thank you for this beautiful thing to come before you and to eat the body of Jesus Christ and to drink his blood. I pray in the name of Jesus that everyone who participated in this, in the name of Jesus, will receive new strength in their bodies, will receive new strength, will receive healing, will receive freedom, and you will make them victorious in every area of their lives. I pray tonight May the blood of Jesus that was drunk right now break every yoke. May the blood break every curse. May the blood destroy every burden. And may the blood, which speaks a better word than the blood of Abel, begin to speak into the lives of your children. Father, may that blood, the blood of Jesus, begin to speak right now. May the blood of Jesus begin to speak right now. In their homes, in their cars, wherever your children are. May the blood of Jesus begin to speak for them. In the mighty name of Jesus, may the blood begin to speak on their behalf. In the name of Jesus, every area of their lives that they need the voice of God, may the blood begin to speak into that area of their lives. In the name of Jesus, may the blood begin to speak tonight, even in the lives of your children, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Spirit of God, may the blood never be quiet. May the blood speak. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. It's time for the offering. Wherever you are, lift up your phone. Because the only way you can give tonight is to through your phone. You look on the screen and we have the numbers there. Your tithes, your offering, 
if you want to give any special seed to the Lord, whatever you want to give tonight, the numbers are on your screen over there. And I want you to really give uh, uh, a good, good offering. Honor God tonight. Honor God. Honor God. Honor God with what is in your hand. Don't give a normal one. Just give uh, an offering or seed to honor God. Lift up that seed. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for that which is in our hands. We bring it to honor you. We say that everything that we have, we received from you. And tonight, what we have received, we bring this to honor you. And as you receive it, may you honor us. May you do what your word says, that you give back unto us. Good measure, president, shaking together and running over. We thank you that it is done. In Jesus' name, amen. Right, beloved in the Lord, wherever you are, I announce to you tonight that on Thursday, what's the date on Thursday? What? First July? Okay. No, 2nd July. On Thursday, the 2nd of July, 2020, we have uh, the opportunity of hosting Apostle Frank Hechveria from Miami, USA, from King Jesus Ministry in Miami. And um, he will be on with us. We'll send you a flyer. Um, and uh, he said, I am loaded. And God has given me the opportunity to really give back to my brother and his sons and daughters in Accra, Ghana. So, beloved in the Lord, Apostle Frank H. Vera will be with us on the broadcast on Thursday. And I don't think you want to miss that. I don't think you want to miss that. Whatever you have to do to come on by 7 p.m., please do. And God will richly bless you. I know that he has something to really give to us from the Lord. And I don't want you to miss it. So whatever you have to do, do it so you can come on and really partake in this. God richly bless you. I love you so much. And we will see you again on Wednesday with some powerful prayers. I mean, I know God is doing something. After the fast last week, there is fire burning inside of us. And we just want to let it go. We just want to release it. So there's going to be fire in this place. There's going to be fire in your house on, on Wednesday. Do not miss Wednesday prayer, 7 p.m. sharp. Mama Ruth is going to be with us. And probably maybe both of us are going to be with you. Maybe you're going to do a joint stop, something. We're going to really tag on the, um, Wednesday. Uh, I'm not too sure, but probably yes. And I just want you to prepare. And uh, come on. Uh, we're going to do this together. I know that God is really going to bless you. So don't miss Wednesday. Don't miss Thursday. There's going to be the presence of God in your home. It's going to come into your God. He's going to really do something in your life. So come. In fact, what, let me say this. If you have prayer requests, send them. Send them. The number is there. Send the prayer request before Wednesday. If you have prayer requests, special prayer requests, send them before Wednesday. Let's pray about, on, on them. And fast on Wednesday. Wednesday is a fasting day for this church. The whole church fasts on Wednesday, 6 to 6. And then we'll come and pray at 7 p.m. So whatever you are doing, fast on Wednesday. And then let's meet Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. I love you so much. God bless you. May he cause his face to shine upon you. May he be gracious unto you. May his peace that surpasses all understanding rest upon you. May you receive God's favor and may you receive favor from all men. God bless you. Amen.